Hi, my name is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel. In case you are new to this channel, please like this video, share it among your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel. Let's talk about generative AI. From the past two years, there has been a huge change in the market. There has been a huge shift from traditional AI or traditional data science work or traditional machine learning, deep learning work to generative AI. That means many companies are actually investing a lot into generative AI because of which you can go ahead and check various job portals like LinkedIn, Glassdoor or any kind of job portal. The number of jobs for data scientist positions are decreasing and the roles and jobs for generative AI are increasing because companies are taking a bet. Companies are going to invest more on generative AI. Right now, most likely companies are more interested in textual generation part, but eventually going down the line in next one or two years, companies are going to also invest into image generation and video generations as well. Now, why are we talking about generative AI? Well, you must have already gone through the title of this video. In this video, we are going to focus on generative AI. I have also done a lot of interview related Q&A sessions, videos related to Power BI, data analytics and various other topics and many of you have shown a lot of support and love because of which in this video we are going to talk about the top 5 generative AI questions asked in interviews and this video is for everybody. It is for beginners, for freshers, for intermediate people and for experienced professionals as well. The level of answering differs from experienced professionals to freshers. For freshers, you can actually answer very concisely, but for experienced people or intermediate people, interviews interviewers will be expecting more uh, industry level use case as an example and explain the concepts. It has to be more in depth, right? Let's try to talk about the top five generative AI related interview Q&A in this particular video. Apart from that, a small announcement. Many of you might have already seen a lot of interview Q&A uh, documents that I have published on my channel, on various data communities, on LinkedIn. Similarly, we have curated a generative AI interview Q&A document, which consists of around 40 to 50 interview questions. And that is going to be enough that is going to be enough for your interview so in case you want that document that document will be live on my channel very soon but in case you want an early access just let me know in the comment section by writing down interested in ebooks and i will give you the ebook for that generative ai ebook so let's get started with the top five generative ai interview q and a series The first question that we're going to discuss is how generative AI differs from traditional AI. That is something that seven or six out of 10 interviewers will ask you because that is a quick way of understanding your level of understanding as in candidates level of understanding, right? So how generative AI differs from traditional AI? Again, I'm not going to tell you the answers in concise, but what I'm try trying to tell you is if you are a fresher, be concise, stick to four to uh, three to four minutes for each question. If you are experienced, these questions are basic, but going forward, there are certain questions where you need to take your examples, your previous case studies and answer it accordingly, right? So uh, how to answer this question is very simple. Like traditional AI is all about machine learning, predictive modeling, recommendation systems, deep learning, image classification models and all those things, right? Most likely they are predictive modeling. And also there are some use cases with respect to supervised learning, which is clustering, recommendation systems. But generative AI is completely different, right? It is all about generation. This is where transformers come into picture. The concepts of encoders, decoders come into picture. So in this case, you can quickly go ahead and try to explain what a decoder encoder architecture look like. You can probably give an example or this is how uh, I will be passing my text. Let's say, how are you? I want to do a translation to Hindi. So encoders through the encoders, how are you will go to the decoders and from the decoders, you will get like, aap kaise ho? So 
when you divide this architecture decoder only architectures are nothing but gpt architectures right i mean other way around gpt architectures are nothing but decoder only architectures where your input is prompt and generative is all about generation of text and you can talk about different use cases where generative ai can be useful for example content creation or summarization of a text or translation any kind of nlp related activities generative ai can be helpful and you can potentially talk about some of the industry level use cases that are applicable in the space of generative ai and always give examples with respect to the domain of the company that you are applying for if you are applying for a healthcare company answer something related to healthcare not related to telecom moving on to the second question which is one of the most important questions which i have already done a long 20 minutes video on my channel if you want a dedicated answer for that the link of that video will be in the description what is the question can you describe one of the generative ai use cases or case studies that you have implemented in the recent past a dedicated answer has already been given the link of that video will be in the description please go ahead and watch it out it's a 20 minutes video i'm pretty much sure you will love it because just go ahead and watch it i have i have given a detailed explanation on how to answer that question moving on to the third question the third question is very important how do you evaluate a generative ai model's performance whether they are performing well or not whether the outputs are correct or not now for example here you can actually take a real time use case that you have implemented if you are intermediate or experienced professional they always take examples from the past what have you done even if it is a poc what have you done how did you evaluate most likely human level intervention is needed for evaluation because when you are working on custom data let's say you are creating a chatbot based on a website's information right now the website already has multiple pages you are extracting it as pdf feeding it to your large language model and creating a chatbot so human level intervention is needed to uh, see whether the performance of the model is good or not right so whenever you are asking a question the answers should basically match so domain expertise plays a very vital role in evaluation of generative ai models right so if you want to go in depth you can probably go more in depth and try to explain more but overall this is going to be the answer the fourth question is what are rags and what problems do rags solve now on this topic i can literally go on hours and hours right but as you are giving an interview interview is normally of 45 to 60 minutes right but in the first 15 20 minutes the interviewer already knows whether he wants to hire you or not so if this question comes in the first 15 to 20 minutes you know you have to play the game right you have to make him believe that you already know these concepts very well racks retrieval augmented generation try to explain the retrieval part what is retrieval what is augmentation what is generation also talk about some of the problems without racks some of the problems are let me know in the comment section what do you think what are the problems with general large language models hallucination right um, kind of overfitting problems hallucination is the major problem right and issues with custom data if you are dealing with custom data without rags it's going to be difficult to implement a chatbot llm chatbot so rags comes into picture when you toss up a use case related to custom data take an example it could be anything you are converging a research paper to a chatbot or you are taking your data analytics or data science materials and creating a chatbot or you are taking your medical reports using prompt engineering you are asking the llm to behave like a general practitioner and extract the information from the medical reports and answer you that can be done so rags has tons and tons of use cases pick one that is the most relevant for the interview and answer it in case you want me to answer these kind of questions in a separate video let me know in the comment section i will come i will come back with a dedicated long 30 to 40 minutes of video only answering these questions because i don't want to make this video huge right 
last question the most important fifth question is have you used vector database now this is a very important question and it can be followed up with the extension of it which is have you used vector database how different is it from vector index and how different is it from traditional databases now this is a very critical question with respect to generative ai space in the space of generative ai what we do we take pdf documents we chunk it down we convert them into vectors and vector data needs to be stored somewhere right because when you store it somewhere only then you can fetch it now imagine you are working on a simple use case you are working on a chatbot that will answer questions from your own research paper so you have your research paper you are chunking it down to multiple documents and then converting it into vectors now you have to store this vector somewhere right to store the vectors you need a vector database now once your chatbot is ready the front end is ready the ui is ready when you are asking a question with respect to that paper okay tell me the authors of the paper what's happening is your input your prompt is again converted into tokens and then vectors that vector goes into the vector database to search the most similar vectors and then it gets like three or four vectors similar vectors and then it calls the uh, large language model for the chat completion and gives you the final output that is all the that is what the whole process of the the llm chatbot is right vector databases are used to store the vector data what is the difference between vector database and vector index vector indexes are normally local storages right they are like every time you create your chatbot or you restart your flask application or your streamlit application for a new document an index will be created on the go which is a local storage right vector database is like is like a physical database is like a database exactly like a mysql or oracle sql database right that is the difference between index and db indexes are fine for pf pocs when you are doing something on your own laptop but when you are converting a poc to the next step you should always use a vector database now how vector databases are different from traditional databases traditional databases basically store only scalar data integers numbers textual data blah 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 scalar data and vector database stores vector data that is the first difference the second difference is vector databases are huge because when you are talking about a thousand page pdf when you are converting it into vectors the data is huge right if you use a scalar database the fetching time will be more the latency will be high even if you want to store it in a scalar database it is possible it's it's not like it's impossible it's possible but let's say you store all your data information in your um, in your scalar database let's say mysql database when you are fetching the latency time will be very very high because you are going and fetching from the entire database right but in vector data there are some concepts locality uh, hashing concepts are there locality sensitive hashing concepts are there bucketization is there multiple concepts are there because of which fetching data from a vector database is faster and easier if you want to know more about the differences between traditional databases and vector databases you can probably check out the documentation that we have created the interview q and a documentation in case you want a copy of that you know what to do let me know in the comment section and the copy will be with you that's all about this particular video on top 5 generative ai interview question and answer series trust me there are lots and lots of interview questions that can come in your examination but out of the five that i told you these are most likely to come and if you are able to answer if you are able to impress your interviewer in the first 15 20 minutes i'm sure the chances of getting a job will be much higher that's all about this particular video in case you want a specific video on a specific project or any random topic from me let me know and i will come back with a new video that's it see you in the next video till then